Hi, I'm Laura Crowd. Your best memory ever, if you had to keep one only. Yeah, Paris, I'm, Paris. I'm very excited about it. Hey, j'espère que vous allez bien. On se retrouve aujourd'hui sur ma chaîne YouTube pour une toute nouvelle vidéo. Et c'est un nouvel épisode de Mathilda Wellington. Aujourd'hui pour ce nouvel épisode, on a énormément de chance puisqu'on va aller à la rencontre de la cavalière horse pilot et championne olympique Laura Kraut dans ses écuries à Wellington. Elle nous accueille chez elle, la vidéo va être en anglais, les sous-titres sont disponibles juste ici ou là. Il faudra regarder, c'est disponible d'un côté ou de l'autre. Bref, on va aller à la rencontre de Laura Kraut, j'ai vraiment beaucoup trop hâte. So Laura, thank you so much for welcoming us in your stables here in Wellington. It's like an honor to be here. I'm shaking being here <laughs> next to you. But so for people who don't know you, could you introduce yourself in a few words? Like if I don't know you and I meet you, how would you say? Oh gosh, uh, uh, hi, I'm Laura Crowd. Uh, I am a, a show jumper in the equestrian world and a mom and a grandmother to my one-year-old grandson. I would like to know how this started, because why? Why did you start riding horses? Why this sport and not another one? Yeah, it, was, it wasn't even a question. My mother was horse crazy. And so <laughs> I think from the time we were born, my sister and I, we were you know, around horses. Yeah. And I can't remember a time when I didn't have a pony or a horse or you know, a plastic horse or whatever. Yeah, I mean, we we yeah. all had these. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I never played with dolls. It was only horses. So yeah, there was just never anything but. How I started show jumping, because you can ride horses, but from horses to Olympic medalists, there mm -hmm. is like, there's a big, big yeah, step. <laughs> that was a big step. Uh, yeah, I mean, I really, uh, I grew up here in the United States yeah. and I went through the hunter sort yeah. of ranks. So I rode ponies and then horses and the hunters. A little bit of equitation. I never rode a show jumper until I was 19. Okay. So yeah, that was. Um, That's quite late in a way. It was way. very late. I look back on it and I think, you know, I didn't know what I was missing, I guess. But the <laughs> opportunities that I had as a young person, I worked, we worked for some people um, who, who provided us with ponies and then horses which was very, very fortunate for us. Um, but yeah, at that time, no jumpers. So uh, when I turned 19, we got a, a, what we call an amateur jumper. Yeah. And he was wonderful. He was um, a quarter horse. Yeah. Yeah. And he <laughs> was great. He was, he was just, I didn't even, he never had fences down, hardly ever. You know, he just was one of those. So I learned how to go fast and I, I was just immediately taken with it. Okay, yeah. that's a nice story. I think I was always wanting to be a professional rider. It was just in what capacity. So I could have become a professional hunter yeah. trainer or hunter Because that's something rider. we don't have in Europe, uh, yeah, being a professional hunter, but yeah. here it's quite big. Here it's huge. Yeah. And um, so I could have done that. But I think when I turned 19 and I got into the show jumping, Ultimately, I knew that was what I wanted to do. It just, you know, getting from that point to yeah. where I wanted to be was going to be a big step. Yeah. So it took a while. And so how, how did this work from starting showing, show jumping, and then getting all the medals? <laughs> <laughs> I um, want the secrets. <laughs> yeah, well, that was, I, I did a lot of, um, you know, riding for other people. We yeah. call it catch riding here in yeah. America. Um, I would ride anything. So yeah. if they, if somebody had a horse that was stopping, I would that ride it. Job. If uh, they had a horse that was crazy, I would ride it. You know, it was just <laughs> sort of, yeah, I would ride anything and everything. And I continued to ride the hunters for, I think, probably until I was nearly 40. Okay. I rode hunters because it, it was, it paid well. And yeah. so I could earn a living and then hopefully yeah. whatever jumper, show jumper might come my way, I would ride. Um, so that's, that's kind of how it happened. And, and I was uh, given a thoroughbred horse uh, called Simba Run yeah. from a man named Jeff Sutton. He rode him himself, uh, but he decided that he was, he was too old and he wanted to, he, he felt the horse had a lot of potential. So he asked me to ride him. 
uh, I caught rode him yeah. in a Grand Prix. He okay. asked me that morning, would you ride him okay, in the Grand that's Prix? Crazy. And I said, sure. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I, I had two down, um, but he said, you know, I really think this horse could go somewhere. And, uh, and he was right because he ended up being the horse that I qualified for the Olympic Games in Barcelona with in 92. I was the reserve, but... Um, but I mean... Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> I, went, I, I went from basically being nowhere to doing that. And that really was sort of the beginning of, of where I thought I, I knew I wanted to be. Then medals arrived, a lot of them. Well, so, <laughs> <laughs> never enough. Never, never enough. enough. Yeah. But what would be your best memory ever if you had to keep one only? That's tough. I mean, I you know I would I would always go to winning the gold medal in Hong Kong with yeah. Cedric. I mean, I think that was something. That was a, <laughs> that was sort of a, the most unexpected uh, moment for sure in my career. Um, to go there with a horse that we knew he had the ability, but he was a very difficult horse, and it, we were really going to be heroes or zeros, you know. Okay, there was, yeah. So that was sort of a, a nerve-wracking time, but he he always knew when it was important, and he he managed to do what it was that he could do, which was jump clear rounds. So he was fantastic, and yeah, it was it was exciting. And with all these medals, never enough. But with all of them, <laughs> like. Do you still have dreams to reach or the medals to, to oh, get? Of course, yes. Yeah, which I ones? Mean, well, I mean, I love, I, you know, I'm dead set on going to Paris, hopefully, if I've got myself in shape and the yeah. horses in shape. Um, and again, I'd love, I'd love another team medal. I'd love an individual medal. Yeah. I've, individual medals have eluded me. Um, I, I don't know why, but I feel like um, I don't know, I really enjoy being with the team yeah. aspect of it. So I, I don't know whether it's in my head that, you know, once we've won the a, team. a gold or a silver in the team, then the, the individual didn't seem as significant to me. Yeah. And then of course in Tokyo, they changed the format. Yeah. So it that was, was different. a different, um, different set of circumstances. So yeah, I mean, I would very much love to try to win an individual. I'm running out of time. So uh, no, I you think, still have time, <laughs> of course. I think that, yeah, Paris, I'm, Paris. I'm very excited about it and I'm, I'm hopeful that we can give it a go. And then Los Angeles, here in the US. Well, we'll see, we'll see. I'll, <laughs> I'll be getting on a bit at that stage. So we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge. To win, you need good horse riding clothes. Yes. What? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what? makes a good like horse riding breeches, good horse riding top what is important for you in clothes to be comfortable riding yeah i mean listen i think the most important thing is that you feel comfortable in yeah. what you're wearing because you don't want to be distracted by yeah. you know if your breeches aren't don't fit you well or like i like the material i love the material in horse pilot yeah. because it's i think it's we've got the same and it's yeah we yeah. do i think we're wearing the same one i really like that i love the riding yeah. shirts um again they're also easy to there's no ironing involved you know yeah, you yeah, no, I know. throw them in the wash <laughs> and they're ready to dry to, to be and, I, and they're riding jackets as well they're yeah. just easy um they look great they with do. very little effort <laughs> so you know i think for me it's it's been a nice uh company to work with because they they really have great quality i think yeah. the quality of the clothes is yeah, as good as sure. it gets so that's what i like so that's why it. you're wearing to win yes <laughs> <laughs> So Laura, we're here now in your stables. Is it possible to give us a little stable store to see how things work for you here? Sure, well, listen, this is the stable that I have here in Wellington yeah. is nice and small, um, not too many horses. And uh, it's just perfect. It's very close to the horse show. Yeah. So we can 
actually get on and hack them there in like five minutes, which is so you nice. Ride. Yeah. Oh my God, that's yeah. so nice. So uh, the the ones that aren't in the FEI, they they'll just go five minutes down there. Yeah. Will compete and then they come back. So it's really nice. They get to be showing but at home at the same yeah. time. So that's nice. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's a simple stable. We have tack room, laundry room. The stables. I like it that it's very open. Yeah. It's chilly today, but normally it's warm. Normally in Florida is. <laughs> normally it's warm, and so it has great airflow. So yeah. for me, I like that because, you know, the horses, for the breathing and, yeah, it's and everything, it's good that they have a lot of um, fresh air. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're very happy here. It's a small piece of property, but it has everything. Yeah. We have six paddocks. We have a lunge pen, we have a walker, we have a treadmill. You've got everything. We've got a nice <laughs> ring, and then we just step out uh, outside the property, and we're on what, I mean, you can go out for hours on trails. Yeah, that's a nice here. So, but so yeah. like a week in your life here, because you've got Monday is like the day Monday's off. Monday's the day off, Ooh. yes, which, you know, we end up going to the grocery store to the, you know, what, I mean, all the bank, the whatever um, we've got to do that we haven't been able to do the other days. Tuesdays are sort of the days where we ride all the horses, prepare them yeah. for the week, whichever ones we're going to be jumping or not. Um, lessons. Yeah, because uh, you've got all the lessons to do. Yeah, yeah, lessons to do. And then, and then starting first thing Wednesday morning until the last thing Sunday afternoon. Because you've worked your show, on. it's not far, so you can ride. Yeah, do the show I mean, and then normally what happens with me is I'm at the show probably at the latest 7.30 in the yeah. morning. Um, and then all the people that work for me, they, they'll shuttle the horses back and forth. Um, so you can stay there and I coach stay there. and ride. Yeah. Oh my God, I that's mean, busy we, days. It's busy. I mean, you can't <laughs> believe how busy it is actually. So I uh, actually, I had an injury a few weeks ago, so yeah. I haven't been competing. And I thought, oh, this is going to be boring. And honestly, I have been so busy not riding. I don't know how I'm going to fit riding and <laughs> everything else all together, but no. um, we'll give it a go. So now I've got 10, we, we, we call that, I think it's called the top 10 questions. Top 10. Okay. Yeah, we decided it's going to be the top 10 questions. So I have 10 questions for you okay. that you need to answer as fast as possible. Oh gosh, okay. <laughs> it's going to be easy. Are you ready first? I'm re we're ready. You, you're we're ready. ready. Okay. Yeah. First question, which horse would you say is the horse of your life? Cedric. Your best victory ever? Hong Kong. Your favorite horse pilot item? Pilot item. Oh gosh, there's so many. <laughs> it's hard for me to say. Um, I would say the riding jacket. If you had to do it all over again, but choosing another sport, which sport would that be? <laughs> no Running clue. Swimming. No clue. No clue. No, this is the only sport for me. <laughs> With all this victory, would you say that you have still dreams to accomplish? Definitely. One thing you cannot live without? Horses. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Indoor shows or outdoors? Outdoors. A horse you would love to ride from Big another star. rider? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Your favorite movie? Shawshank Redemption. Oh. And then your favorite show in the whole world? Aachen. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was For easy. Sure. That was easy. Was that ten? Yeah, that was ten. That was that was a really yeah, good job. job. <laughs> uh, yeah, another sport. I just don't even. Definitely, I was not going to be a gymnast. Um, I, you know, like tennis. I'm not good enough. Yeah, and golf. The, I I like to I like to golf, but I wouldn't be that good. And if you had not been riding horses, what job would you have had? Lawyer. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's what I was. <laughs> when I, the, to. the one bit of time that I went to college. Yeah. That was what I was gonna study, and then and then I realized that this colossal waste of money for me to be there, because this is where I really wanted to be. So. So. And you've yeah. done it. So. And we did it. Yeah. <laughs> what do you like the most about horses? You know, I, I love learning about their personalities, yeah. and I love to just sort of get to know them and get to figure them out you know what what makes them happy what makes them perform well and you know there's there's no book you know you you have to know horses yeah. and study them and and uh 
I think for me, that's always been a fun challenge is, you know, how do you get the best out of each horse? Yeah because they're individuals. And uh, yeah, I think it's just something we will never master it. And I yeah, think that's what sure. makes that's what makes it addictive is that, you know, I think if it was that easy that you could get it done on every horse, then you'd lose interest. So I think they always keep Challenges. you guessing. Yeah. I have another question that just comes up to my mind is like, because you're a woman and at top level, we've got a lot of men riding. So how is it to be that good? in a sport that is for men and women, but with only a few women top level. Yes. Is it harder? Well, I get this question all the time. It's not hard at all yeah. in the United States because when I was growing up, it was it was far more women than men. So we used to feel like, oh gosh, the poor men, you know, they don't, <laughs> they don't really, you know, they aren't very significant in what we're doing. <laughs> um, it wasn't until I went to Europe where the it's tables different. were turned. And, you know, honestly, I don't really notice it. I mean, I think, um, maybe if I was younger, just getting into the sport, it would you would notice it. But in reality, it really shouldn't hinder you in any way. Yeah. I mean, m there there are horses that suit men better, and there are horses that yeah, suit sure. women better. And I think, um, you know, the riding of the horses for me, I don't think there's that big of a, a difference. It's it's just the business part of it that I yeah. think could be more difficult. Um, depending on where you lived. In America, being a woman in business is fine. But now it's nice because with all the medals, you're like the role model opening doors for little girls who also want to reach gold medals at the Olympics. I would love that. I mean, you that are. would make me happy, yeah. yeah you, you can be happy about it, <laughs> for sure. And so if you, if you had one advice to give to the little kids who want to be Olympic riders and to, be, to have good results with the horses, even at an amateur level, what would it be? I also get asked this question a lot. And I, I mean, you know, I can answer the standard one, which is, you know, keep working. And, yeah. and but also I, I thought about it recently. And what I, I have noticed is um, you've got to forever be willing to listen and to learn and not feel like you've got it mastered. You know, I think a lot of times I see kids sort of in their early 20s and they, they've had a lot of success and then they think they've got it all figured out and they, they, aren't, even, they aren't even a quarter of the way there. And I think, <laughs> you know, ultimately you see at the Olympic level, most people are in their 30s, 40s, yeah. you know, and that's, you know, they're students of the sport. They're continuously learning and I think that that's what, for me, that would be my biggest bit of advice is always keep your eyes and ears open and, and continue studying it. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> so if you can say something in French now, it would be merci. Merci. Merci beaucoup d'avoir regardé. Oh my God. Merci beaucoup, what? D'avoir. D'avoir. Regardé. Regardé. La vidéo. <laughs> La vidéo. D'avoir. 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 Is it D with a possible Yeah, e -A? that's it. Okay. 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 Merci beaucoup. De voir regarder les vidéos. Je vous mets tous les réseaux sociaux de Laura dans la description et les miens. Vous pouvez aller la suivre sur Instagram et on se retrouve très bientôt sur YouTube. Bye. Goodbye. That was amazing. Was it good? It was good. Okay. <laughs> J'espère vraiment que cet épisode vous a plu et je vous donne rendez-vous dimanche prochain, même chaîne, même heure, pour l'épisode suivant. Bye